Justice Matt Sullivan to enter the court. Please be seated. Could you just X out of the program? <coughs> we are here to decide whether Brutus and the conspirators were patriots or traitors. We will decide whether their actions were justified or not. The prosecution, you may make your opening statement. Today we are here to prove that Brutus, Cassius, and the other conspirators were all traitors and that they killed Caesar because they thought he was an ambitious man, but he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to prove that Brutus, I mean, Cat Caesar wasn't ambitious. The defense will make their opening statement. Um, today we are here to um, prove that Caesar was ambitious, was ambitious, and he must have died, or else Rome went down the drain. <laughs> First, we would like to call to the stand Calpurnia. Raise your right hand, put your left hand on the Bible. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Please be seated. <laughs> so Calpurnia, you were Caesar's wife. How long were you married to Caesar for? We were married for 15 years. Would you say that you two had a happy marriage and that he treated you um, with respect and listened to your opinion? Yes, we did have a happy marriage. He always listened to me and would respect what I had to say. How would you describe your husband? Would you say that he was ambitious? He was ambitious in the sense that he wanted to have the best happen to Rome. He was also noble and brave as he fought for our country and he listened to others. He could also be prideful at times that helped him achieve the best for Rome. Tell us about the dream that you had before the Ides of March. Why were you so persistent that Caesar not go to the Senate on that day? Well, in my dream, I saw his statue stabbed and blood spurting out of his body and the citizens of Rome were bathing their hands in his blood, smiling, and I was worried that this dream would come true. Did you find it strange that Decius was so, trying so hard to convince Caesar to go to the Senate and not stay home with you, even though you were his wife? Yes, it was strange. He, I could see the desperation in his eyes and hear it in his voice, and it was just strange to see him do this so persistently to Caesar. Um, even though Caesar jumped at the chance to go to the Senate in spite of your dire warnings, did you think it was because he wanted to not let Rome down and go to the Senate, or do you think it was because he was ambitious? I believe it was because he didn't want to let his men down, and Decius played on his pride because he knew that Caesar would want to help his men and have the best for Rome. Thank you very much. The defense may cross the table. So, Calpurnia, how did Caesar treat you as his wife? He was kind to me and he listened to what I had to say. He treated me as any other Roman man treated his wife. Did he not at all treat you inferior to him? He treated me with equality and how a man should treat his wife. What about the day when you were concerned that he should not go into Senate and you expressed these feelings to him? How foolish do your fears seem now, Copernia, he said, and he felt ashamed to yield to them. What do you have to say about that? Well, Decius tried to play on his pride and manipulated him into thinking that he had to go to the Senate, and that way he felt that way towards me. The dreams you had about Caesar, can you describe those again? Uh, yes, well, I saw his body spurting with blood and the citizens seemed happy that he was killed. Did you communicate these visions to Caesar? Yes, I did. And what was his reaction? Um, at first <coughs> he was hesitant to go 
to the Senate because he seemed nervous that it might actually happen. But once Decius manipulated him, he decided to go. You said that Decius manipulated him. Do you think this was because Caesar didn't want to seem like he was staying home because his wife told him to? I believe he wanted to make sure that his men back in the Senate were represented properly. Thank you. Prosecution may call their second witness. We would now like to call the stand Artemidorus. Place your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I'll help you, God. Please be seated. So, Artemidorus, where were you on the Ides of March? On the Ides of March, I was in front of the Capitol, waiting to give Caesar a letter. Is this the letter that you talk about? Yes. Would you like to read it to the court? Caesar, beware of Brutus, take heed of Cassius, come not near Casca, have an eye to Cinna, trust not Trombonius, mark well Metellus, Cimber, Decius Brutus loves thee not, have passed wrong Cassius Ligarius, there is but one mind in all these men, and it is bent against Caesar, if thou be cease not immortal, look about you, security gives way to conspiracy. They, the mighty gods, defend thee, thy lover, Artemidorus. What were you trying to tell Caesar in your letter? I was trying to tell Caesar that there are conspirators against him, trying to kill him. Why did you want to warn Caesar about what the conspirators were trying to do? Caesar is a good man, and the people of Rome love him. What was Caesar's response when you asked him if he could read the letter before he went into the Senate? He pushed it off to the side, saying that what comes to him first must be last, and that um, the people of Rome should come first. Do you think this response shows he is an ambitious person? No, because he is selfless. And if he read the letter first, then that would have shown that he was ambitious. Thank you. The defense may cross his aim the witness. You received that note warning Caesar the conspirators, correct? Yes. Did you attempt to communicate these warnings to Caesar? Yes. And what was his reaction? Did he let you read the note? No, he had it put last. When you said, O oh, Caesar, read mine first, for mine's a suit that touches Caesar near, read a great Caesar, what did he say? He says that it should be put last for the Roman people it should be put last. Could you have known why would what the letter would be about that wasn't of great, greater concern. Do you think he left to deal with a petition and he did not care for your little letter, is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Prosecution may call their final witness. Place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I'll help you, God. I do. Please be seated. So it seems that Caesar and Brutus are very good friends. Do you know how long they knew each other? For before, before Caesar was killed by Brutus? They first came in contact in 49 BC at the Battle of Pharsalus and did not become friends until approximately 45 BC. So up to Caesar's death, they knew each other for approximately 11 years. Approximately how many times was Caesar stabbed? And who out of the conspirators stabbed him most? Recent findings by Spanish archaeologists um, note that Caesar was stabbed approximately 23 times. The first time he was stabbed, he was stabbed by the defendant, Casca, 
and the fatal blow was delivered to his chest by Brutus. How does history describe Caesar's method of ruling? Was he a tyrant? Was he a dictator? He was described as a beloved leader, though contrary to common belief, he was never actually given the title emperor. He was, however, given the title um, a dictator, but he did include many reforms, including doling out land for the poor and giving better living quarters to veterans. By looking at the way Caesar ruled over Rome, what did the people think of Caesar? On the whole, it is my belief that outside of the Senate, Caesar was beloved by his people. He was mindful of the poor and the veterans, and his only offense, it seems, was to anger the Senate by pushing for things he wanted to do for Rome. Thank you. Antony, why did you follow Caesar? Why did you stand by him? Did you think he was a good, like, good leader for Rome? Not Antony. Oh, oops. Like, who I'm Caesar, uh, the historian. Oh, okay. So, what... What, like, when did Antony and Caesar meet? They met in about 49 BC at the Battle of Florellus. When did Caesar come to rule over Rome? That was in about 45 BC. Okay. So how long was Caesar in rule before he was assassinated? About 11 years, the same length of time he knew Brutus. Um, um, how long was, do you know about Pompey? Yes. How long was he in rule before? It's not really sure because himself, Brutus, and a main man named Crassus were kind of all ruling together. It wasn't until after Crassus' death and Caesar's invasion of Gaul that he took the head seat in the Senate. Okay. Um, did Rome become more stable after Caesar came into rule? Since there were more leaders before and now he was the only one? It is believed that it was more stable, yes. So is there any reason to believe that Caesar should be assassinated? No. Okay. Thank you. The prosecution may call their next witness. We would like to call Anthony. Place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I so I'll help you, God. I do. Please be seated. So, Anthony, can you describe to the court what happened when you offered Caesar this crown during the Feast of Lupercal? I, I offered it to him three times, and each time he refused. Why did he do what he did on this day? Um, as his friend, I believe he was not an ambitious man, at least not in the way the conspirators would try to claim. He put the welfare of Rome above his own interests. As I said in my speech at his funeral, he brought prisoners to Rome whose ransoms contributed to Roman revenue, and he had great sympathy for the poor. He was good to his people. What do you think about Caesar's so-called friends going behind his back and plotting against him? I think they have no right to claim they were ever his friends. What they did was duplicitous and cowardly. Um, they had no proof to substantiate their claims that Caesar was a tyrant. In his own speech, after killing Caesar, Brutus didn't list a single piece of evidence. What do you think the motives of the conspirators were for killing Caesar? I think they were envious of his um, power in the Republic. Um, all except for Brutus, who, though he had good intentions, was misguided. He didn't, he didn't think through his actions, and... <laughs> Um, yeah, that's... So I know that you have Caesar's will yes. with you today. Um, Could you please read this out loud to the court? Um, I give and bequeath into every Roman citizen 75 drachmas. To the Roman Republic I bequeath all my walks, private arbors, and new planted or orchards on the east side of the Tiber River. I have them to the public and their heirs for the common pleasures to walk abroad and re recreate themselves. Does this will make Caesar look ambitious, or does it make him look like someone who cared deeply for his people? It looks like he cared deeply for his people. Thank you. Thank you.
fence and across the fence. I'm sorry. Okay. Anthony, could you repeat what Caesar said to you when he was offered the crown? Um, he refused it. Three times? Yes. Have you ever desired the crown for yourself? Could you see yourself in such a high position as Caesar was in? Well, um, as part of the triumphant, I suppose I'm in a fairly high position. So why did you follow Caesar and stand by him? Was it because he had power? Not only that, he was always a good friend to me and he was uh, dedicated to his people and I admired that. When you say you were close to Caesar, was that before or during his rule? I believe that Caesar and I were friends for, I actually don't know Okay. How long you were, were close friends. to Caesar during his rule, correct? Yes. Okay. So did you know him before like Brutus and Cassius did? Um, I didn't say that. Okay. Um, well, Brutus and Cassius, they saw the change in Caesar that you probably wouldn't have seen. Um, they often like spoke of how Caesar almost drowned in the drowned in the Tiber, and when he was sick in Spain, they took care of him. Um, they say that close friends may even know you better than you know yourself. Have you heard that before? Like per gen generally, perhaps yes. Um, Since you only knew Caesar during his rule, could you see the change? Would it possible you could see a change from before and after? I suppose not. I only know him for the good deeds he did for his people. If Brutus and Cassius were citing personal reasons, that the, then that doesn't seem like it would be for the good of Rome. Was, was Caesar always taking advice from Roman citizens when they approached him and warned him? I think Caesar put his duties first and didn't... Yeah. Um, you once said yourself, when Caesar says do this, it is performed. Isn't it true that everyone yields to Caesar's commands without question? Um, in some regards, I suppose. <laughs> Why do you think this would be? Well, he is the leader of Rome, and I believe he has good judgment. Thank you. The defense may call that first witness. Um, I would like to call Morellis to the stand. Place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll help you God? Please be seated. Bro, what were you doing on the streets of Rome that day? Um, Flavius and I were walking along the streets, and then we um, observed the commoners putting decorations on Caesar's statue, so we decided to take them off. Um, why did you do that? Because um, we believe that Caesar was not a great ruler and that the people would follow whoever was in control. Because when Pompey was the ruler, they were following him. Then when Caesar was, they decided to follow him. Yep. So um, did you in any way harm or threaten Caesar? No, we simply stated our opinion. And um, what happened to you and Flavius after that? Well, some people thought we got executed or exiled, but we were just banned from attending public affairs. Taking on. Okay, thanks. Alright, so you say, you say that you and Flavius were put to side, uh, you were taking decorations off yeah. Caesar's statues. And some people think that you were put to silence. Yeah. But you actually weren't. So, is this ambitious? I think it is because we were trying to state our opinion, and we should have a right to believe what we want to believe, and he shouldn't be able to put us to silence just because <coughs> he didn't like what we had to say. All right. Um, so, what happened to you exactly? We were banned from attending public affairs. Okay, is that in any way like bad, like ambitious? Like you pulled statu uh, decorations off the statues, so. Yeah, but it was just decorations on the statues, so 
we were stating our opinion and how we felt about Caesar, and for because of that, we were banned from public affairs. So it wasn't fair that we had to be banned from something or had any punishment at all just for stating our opinion. Um, I would like to call Casca to the stand. Thank you. Good. Place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Please be seated. Is it correct that you you are part of the conspiracy group? Yes, I am. Um. Did you take part on the night of the debate? I did. Um, what was Kafka's request that night? Cash's request? Yes. Cash's like request that. was to swear a resolution or an oath. Okay, and, um, and then what was Brutus's response to that? Uh, Brutus's response was that he did not agree with that because he said not an oath because he was concerned for not just the conspirators, but for everyone in Rome, they were joining, they were being a part of the conspiracy uh, because that Caesar was going to take over Rome and um, just everyone would become slaves and it would just be bad. Okay, so what you're basically saying is that um, Brutus, Brutus did it for the people, not for himself, right? Yes, he you was want... concerned for them. Um, uh, yeah. And then, is that all? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, Casca, can you describe what happened when Caesar de denied the crown? Which, which time? When he denied the crown. He got denied the crown twice. He denied the crown twice. Actually, three times. Well, three times, <laughs> yeah. So, do you think this is ambitious of him? No. <laughs> Alright, so you're proving my point here? <laughs> no. I don't agree with you, but he denied the crown. He just denied the crown. <laughs> um... What motivated you to be the first person to stab Caesar? Uh... Because <laughs> I wanted... Um, I was the first person to stab Caesar because I... <laughs> I cannot answer that question. I, I guess we can clearly see that. They don't know what they're talking about. Uh, I would like to call Lucius. Put your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Please be seated. Hey. Lucius, were you there that night when Brutus was reasoning with himself and when the conspirators were at his house? Yes, I was there. I was actually sleeping, and he woke me up. Right. Um, what did you witness? Um, Brutus seemed so anxious and tense. He kept talking a lot to himself whether he should kill Caesar for ambitiousness or not. Um, so Brutus had much thought over it before taking action and being a part of the conspiracy, right? Yes, he did. He thought it really well. And he, um, the reason he thought he wanted to do it for the people, everything. Because he, he was really good friends with Caesar. Okay, um, what conclusion did you hear him come up with? He decided to join the conspiracy because he believed that Caesar was ambitious. He decided that not because of his ambitiousness, but because of, for the Roman people. And I, I remember the exact word he said that I, I do, um, I don't know cops <laughs> to spurn it <laughs> for the general. Okay, um, so, um, okay, um, in general, how did Bruce treat you? He always treated me really well and his army.
Um, and uh, okay, and you said his army. What, um, how do you show that he cared for his army? Um, during the war, he like. Um, I remember after talking to Casca, Cassius, he like called us back. Yep. And to let us sleep in his tent because he cared about us. So he let his army sleep in his own tent. Yes, because he cared about us. Okay, that just shows how much he cares about his people. So you were Brutus's servant, am I correct? Yes. How would you say he treated you? He always treated me really well. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, one night, Brutus was having trouble falling asleep, and he was jealous about how easy it was for you to sleep. Um, do you think it was because he had a guilty conscience about joining the conspiracy? No, he was just worried that if the decision was right or not. Why he was, was he, worried for the people. Why was he having so much worry about this? Because he was worried for the people if this would really benefit the Roman people. So you're saying it was hard for him to make a decision? No, it wasn't. It was just because it was hard for him to sleep. Because he was having a hard time making a decision. <laughs> because he was having a hard time <laughs> Because he was having a hard time sleeping, that's it. Because he was guilty. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he felt guilty. No, he did not feel guilty. He just had a hard time sleeping like we all do. Would you say that he was like an easily manipulated person? Uh no, because the first time when Casca and everyone told him to join the conspiracy, he didn't just jump into it. He had to, like, think over it. Yeah, but they manipulated him to join the conspiracy, almost. They wrote him those letters. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> and also, they all agreed to whatever Brutus said. That's because they saw him, they knew that every decision that Brutus was going to make, it was for the good for the Roman people. Do you think that they agreed with him because they didn't want to anger him and he would leave the conspiracy? Well, because they wanted him in the part of conspiracy because he was a really true Roman person. And, and it was, he just wanted to do it for the people and if, if the way that, if Brutus was part of the conspiracy, people would believe him too because they all love him. So he was a true Roman who killed his best friend? Yes, it was the reason for killing his best friend. He didn't want to kill him, but he just killed him because for the Roman people. That's all. Thank you. Uh, I would like to call up the historian. Place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be guy? I do. Please be seated. Okay, so, um, where did Brutus get his name from? Brutus got his name from his ancestor, Brutus, who overthrew the first kings of Rome and gave to the Senate and the people the power that had previously been in the hands of one man. So, um, exactly how faithful was Caesar in his marriage to Calpurnia? Caesar actually was unfaithful to Calpurnia. He had an affair with Cleopatra, the pharaoh of Egypt. They even had a son, Caesarion. Okay, um, what enemies did Caesar have to defeat to be able to seize power? In 49 BC, Caesar's rival with rivalry with Pompey turned into a civil war. Caesar defeated Pompey in war. Pompey fled and was eventually murdered. Okay. Um, so um, after he after he beat Pompey, what did he, what did he de um, declare himself? He declared himself dictator for life. And what exactly is a dictator? A dictator is similar to a king. All the power remains in the hands of one man. And that could lead to corruption, correct? It could. Thank you. Prosecution be prosecuted. Okay. So, you said that Calpurnia, um, that 
that Caesar cheated on Calpurnia. Is that correct? Yes. Would you say that back then that was pretty common? Maybe. It could be. So looking at Caesar as a husband back then, it doesn't seem like he was actually that bad of a husband. Not as bad as it would look today. Um, by looking at the way Caesar ruled over Rome, what do you think the people thought of Caesar? The people thought of Caesar as a great ruler, ruler, but that could have been because of Caesar's way of deceiving them, manipulating them. <coughs> it seems that Caesar was very good at being a good politician by getting people to do what he wanted to do. Do you think that's a good trait of being like a leader? Yes, it, it could be if you use that trait to in good ways. It seems that Rome thrived during Caesar's rule, so he obviously used that in good ways, is that correct? One could say so. Would you say that Caesar was a tyrant? To say Caesar was a tyrant may not be the best example, but where he was going with things, one may say he, say he was a tyrant in the future. Okay, thank you. Prostitution they may, they may make their closing statement. So there's a lot of evidence proving that Caesar was not an ambitious person. First of all, he refused the crown three times, thrice times, when Antony presented to him at the Lupercal. Also, when Calpurnia told her about told him about her dream, he decided um, he didn't want to go. But then the conspirators manipulated him into going proving that the conspirators were very manipulative and they didn't have Caesar's best, in, best intentions at heart. Also, Brutus and Anthony both gave speeches after Caesar died. And when Brutus spoke about um, the reasons why Caesar was ambitious, he didn't give any like hard, cold evidence. Um, whereas Anthony did, saying how he cared for like the poor and that ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Ambitious. Maybe for the people of Rome, but for himself, no. <laughs> but the evidence shown during the cross-examinations that Caesar did not listen to his wife even if she had concerns during her dreams about his life. He acted as, as if she was inferior to him. Antony, who supposedly disapproves of Caesar's death, did not know Caesar well enough as Brutus and Cassius, um, and therefore cannot tell if power had corrupted him during his rule. Caesar could indeed lead people, but he would not pay attention to any of the even small warnings that Roman citizens gave to him, such as the one Artemidorus had. Caesar perhaps did not want to listen because he knew that um, he knew an own secure insecurity about his rule and would quickly dispose of anyone who mentioned a flaw such as the case with Morales and Flavius, who were exiled for only taking off decorations of his statues. People followed Caesar solely because he had power. Even if they had loved Pompey before, when Caesar took over, he was the new favorite. Now we need to make a decision based on the evidence you believe to be true. The will exit the building, and the judge will rise. All rise. Exit outside the hallway and then confirm. Okay, recess. Yeah, someone's <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I know, but you said when they had the but I said you might also walk it back and forth. He did everything? Uh, yeah, that's what it is. And yeah, he just really good. I was Oh, we still taking videos. That was the same one. I gotta keep it going until I come back in. Because yeah, it's easier. I don't want to. I can't really edit stuff. Walk around. Caesar was ambitious. Caesar was ambitious. I'm just so trying gross. to ignore you. I'm like, look at the video. Is this still recording? <laughs> yeah. Is this still recording? Yeah. Why? Because I don't want to stop it. I have to edit later. <laughs> I'll yeah. wait for you to say that quote. I'll be like, what was the other day? Yeah. I know. I'm like, oh, 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 I was, I was standing back here just zooming in. <laughs> we were walking in there. <laughs> so it was probably like right up there. Yeah, this is the best. Yeah, there's interesting. Yeah, this is the best. Let me make it. Did you make this? Oh, yeah. It's still recording. Yeah, because you're gonna like I was gonna use, I was gonna say you could use Sorry, my old headband, but someone from the defense took it out of my bag. You told me I couldn't get it off. The dust, dust. It's so long. Dust. It's so long. It's so long. Wait, why do you need to write it on the phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Type this fast. Andy. Why'd you, um, uh, I, I think, like, selfie. Oh, like, we're in somewhere. Yeah, so many words. Wait, what are we doing? Oh, I thought that meant that. Do we need to say our evidence? It's up to you. All rise. Enter Justice Matt Sullivan and jerk. <laughs> Sides, we find Brutus and the conspirators guilty. Now that you're fresh and your recall is really good, let's debrief a 